Hello. Today, participants no longer want to be passive in front of a speaker. They are asking to be part of the presentation. By the end of this short video, you will be able to explain two interactive techniques to encourage participations. We're going to talk about the pull, then push, and the think, pair, share. Let's talk about the pull, then push, a very powerful technique if it is used properly. First of all, you look at your slides and you decide and you realize that that slide, they know part of it. So instead, Mr. Speaker, Mrs. Speaker, instead of telling them, why are you, are you not asking them? So select a slide with content on it you believe they know. Before showing the slide, ask an open-ended question to pull the content from them. Then push the content missing. How to use properly the pull and push? You are not talking to children, so never point anybody. Please ask an open question. Look at them with a smile, a smile and be patient. Do not answer your question. Often speakers are doing that. They're answering their own question. Be patient. Wait. They will answer. Give them time to reflect. When they answer the question, you show the slide. You add, thank you, thank you, thank you. You've got some information. Then you show the slide, and there is a wonderful opportunity for you to tell, to say, like John said, like Mary said, like Jose said, wonderful opportunity because it will encourage them to keep on participating during your presentation, during your workshop. Let me give you an example. What are the platform skills of a good speaker? I'm asking you like that. So I, I look at everybody and I'm hoping and I know someone will answer. Let's say no one is answering. Give them an example. Give them an answer. So they will start by, they will start speaking. So platform skills. What are, what is a good platform skills? Well, good eye contact. Part, speakers should look at one person at a time. One thought, one idea per person. Believe or think in your mind that you're talking to a friend. I'm talking to this friend. I'm talking to this other friend. So good audience, uh, good the scanning of your audience. The voice. Don't talk too fast. Don't talk too slow. Change your, so don't, please talk fast and talk slow or talk loud or talk soft. Change your voice. Good articulation. Make sure you pronounce well the words you are saying. Avoid the ums and the you know and the like. So this is what we should try to avoid when we're doing a talk or a presentation. A contagious smile. When you're talking, when you're smiling to audience, wonderfully, this they smile to you, and that's wonderful. Displaying energy and no excessive mannerism. Be yourself as much as you can. So you see, I've done my own work. I did prepare a slide with the answer, the answers to the question I was asking. Often, and that's the beauty of that technique. Often, in your next presentation, you will add, add some idea that you've received, that you heard from your participant. So that's what Andragogy is, is, is doing for you. You're sharing your experience, you're sh sharing your knowledge, and you get some information from them, and now you're richer and richer all the time. So we've done the pull and push. Let's talk now about the think pair share. Often we have participants that are talking, you have some participants that are talking all the time, always the same, always the same, who are answering your question, who are talking. And unfortunately, you realize that some people over there, they're not talking. So this is a wonderful technique for you to invite them to talk and add uh, to the reflection they've been, they've made the, they've made the, they've been making. So. Individual reflection, you start by asking a question. You have a slide, and you know on that slide, that question, they should take time to reflect on it. So first, say, I want you all to think about that question and write down 
what is it that you think about it? You know, what is your answer on it? Secondly, you pair up with partner. So two, 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 two people are in, in pairs. They work on that question. Sometimes what I like to do when I have many people and what I do is I have groups. So group one, group two, group three, and group four. So you could have five, four, six people at the same table working on that question. Sometimes I have a lot of information to pass and a little time and many questions. So what I do is I say, okay, team number one, I want you to work on this question. Team number two on this question. Team, team, team number three on this question. So people work on different questions and you get all the information. So it's very, very rich. Share thoughts and idea with the group. When you did invite people to work on a question to answer a question, make sure that when you do the plenary, you don't tell them, you don't invite them to say everything, all their findings at once. What you say, say, give me one idea that you've worked on, one idea, one of your thoughts. Thank you, one, 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 and one. You don't want them to talk and say everything, so it's quite discouraging for the last group who have worked too, and has not, have nothing to say. So that's very important. So think, pair, share. A large group plenary, optional, but most of the time we have time to do it. When you don't have time to do it, you just say, I want you to look at your answers, and I want you to compare your answers with that slide. Let me give you an example. How do you manage time during a presentation? What are the techniques you are using to manage your time? Managing time during a presentation will start on time. Very important. You are going to be very, you are going to disappoint your participants if because some people have not arrived yet, you wait a five minutes before you start. Please respect the participants that were on time. Time agenda. Always have a time agenda. You know that this topic you will address for five minutes, this one for seven minutes, this one for three minutes. All organized before you start your presentation. Visible clock. The last thing a speaker should be doing is to look at his watch, at her watch. Have a clock. No one will see it, but you're going to manage your time like that, checking your clock all the time. Indicate limited time warnings. I'm giving you 10 minutes to think about that. After two minutes, I see now there's seven, eight minutes left, and now there's five minutes left, two minutes left, and now welcome back, everybody. So you always invite people and inform them of the time uh, limited, the limit of time. Parking lot, wonderful tool that you probably all know, but it's having a big paper, big sheet of paper that you put on the wall. At the beginning of your presentation, you tell them, we may be able, not able to answer all the questions. So I'm going to invite you, if you have a question that we cannot answer right away, to put it in the parking lot and we'll make sure that all your questions will be answered before the end of this presentation. Now, do your homework, very important. Prepare your answers. Don't ask questions when you have, when you have not answered that yourself. Conclusion. Now we've seen hold and push in pair share. And one day a participant came to me after a workshop and he told me, Hélène, I may not think, I may, I may not remember everything you've said during this workshop. But there's something I will remember. I will always remember how you made me feel. I wish you the very same. Thank you. Have a good day.